morning. I'm here at Net News Ledger and I'm very proud to present my State of the City address as delivered uh, last night. Um, I'd just like to uh, recognize that we're on the lands of the uh, traditional uh, lands of the Fort William First Nation and the Robinson Superior, Superior Treaty and also want to recognize the contributions of our Métis uh, peoples of Ontario. January 1st, 2020, the city of Thunder Bay will be 50 years old. We are quickly approaching our Golden Jubilee, a milestone we can all be proud of. The last decade in particular has seen a tremendous change, including the transformation of our waterfront, major building projects throughout the city, transformation of key industries, work to improve our image routes and growth. Growth as a regional hub, growth in business, and growth in diversity and services for all. 2015 saw the best assessment growth the city has seen in 25 years. We are constantly communicating with citizens with t tools like the Citizen Satisfaction Survey, and citizens tell us they generally like what they have in terms of city programs and services. They want us to focus on making what we have even better. I want you to know that we have heard you and that we are committed to, th to do this. We have a four-year strategic plan titled Becoming Our Best with a detailed implementation plan that is well underway and we are working to become our best. Better roads and more enhanced infrastructure. Cleaner, more beautiful streets and public spaces. More focus on addressing social issues and challenges such as a critical need for housing, eradicating homelessness, and tackling addic addiction issues, building more respect in our community, and continued effort to diversify the economy. While Thunder Bay and every major city in Canada and throughout the world is not without its challenges, we have a lot to be proud of, and pride is something that I'm going to be talking a lot about this morning. Located in the centre of Canada on the large largest Great Lake, and surrounded by the boreal forest, we are a city of contrasts. Historic and modern, ecological and technological, historic and magnificent, close-knit and urban. Robert Bolton, an English playwright and two-time Oscar-winning screenwriter, said, a belief is not merely an idea that the mind possesses, it is an idea that possesses the mind. The belief is this council is that we are a city that is healthy, vibrant, connected, and strong. And if we work together, can and will become even better. We have worked hard to capture the key themes we have heard from thousands of residents during the development of our strategic plan and to articulate a shared vision for where we need to head. Council identified social issues in the city as the number one priority in our strategic plan. We are putting a robust focus on these areas this year and going forward. Along with many, many dedicated organizations throughout Thunder Bay, including the Anti-Racism and Respect Advisory Committee, the Crime Prevention Council, the Poverty Reduction Strategy, Shelter House and Multicultural Association, the Indian Friendship Centre, Guardian Angels and many, many more, we are working to address racism, homelessness and poverty. I'm pleased to report that Thunder Bay has just completed the point, point in time count initiating the 20,000 home, homeless registry campaign to enumerate and identify homelessness in our city. This is the first coordinated homelessness count among communities across Canada and Thunder Bay is the first community to conduct the 20,000 homes registry in conjunction with that count. I'm also pleased to report that I just had the opportunity to speak with the NAN Chiefs Assembly and the city got a large shout out from Chief Grand Chief Alvin Fiddler and Chief Peter Collins of our neighboring Fort William First Nation for the good work we are doing on building an inclusive city. Let's not continue this work. Let's continue this work and not let archaic attitudes and negativity limit the potential for our city. On the heels of Martin Luther King Day last week, and with these important issues in mind, some of his powerful words come to mind, and I ask that we keep these words at the forefront as we move forward to becoming our best. Martin Luther King Jr. said, there comes a time when must, one must take a position that is neither safe, nor politic, 
nor popular, but he must take it because conscience tells him it is right. As a community, we need to evolve this conversation and rally together to build civic pride together and heal our community spirit. This can only be done through respect for all and a united commitment to move together and forward and not allow the damaging effects of racism in this community. We can take pride in the relationship that we have built uh, with Fort William First Nation, the new, new executive from Nishinaabe Aski Nation. We recently held a historic joint council meeting with Fort William First Nation and Van Council together when we met at city council chambers for the very first time. There has much, been much talk about the connection between Thunder Bay and Fort William First Nation. Thunder Bay is working hard to maintain a bridge, and I use that term both figuratively and literally. I'm pleased to report that we won one round one of the uh, James Street Bridge uh, fight with CN, gives city engineers access to the bridge and confirms that we'll be avoiding an expensive, protracted trial at a cost of millions to the city taxpayers. We're still hopeful that we will see that bridge open sooner than later. Just like the city, our corporation is evolving and changing. We have seen several retirements in the last year of key members of our senior management team and have welcomed strong new leadership. This comes with new and fresh ideas and energy and is very exciting. I want to thank those outgoing managers, Tim Camisso, Carol Pollard, Daryl Matson, and other management staff and all our city staff that have retired last year for running the city day in and day out and their commitment to our citizens. I'm also pleased to welcome our new city manager, Norm Gale. Norm is a proud professional, homegrown, and he has proof that our succession planning in the city is working and working well. Another major priority that cripples our city is litter, and it ranks among the top concerns for our citizens. The city of Thunder Bay has made commitments to clean, green, and beautiful. I need to say though, folks, litter is not a corporate problem. It's a community problem. Our city staff is not out there littering our streets, parks, and waterways. People are, and these behaviors need to stop. We know better. Litter directly impacts our sense of pride, demonstration of civic pride and how clean, green and beautiful we are for our children and the visitors who come to our city. I'm proud to say that we'll be seeing some fresh anti-litter messaging out this spring in conjunction with Civic Pride Month in April and that reinforces our city is clean, green and beautiful and littering has no place. Together, City Council and Administration are ambitiously meeting the challenges of the 21st century, economically, environmentally, and socially. Again, we have much to be proud of. And we refuse to let challenges and negativity outweigh the hard work, dedication, and accomplishments of this city and its citizens. Our pride shone through larger than life at the recent Rogers hometown hockey event that brought 12,000 people of all ages together at our beautiful waterfront. It was an incredible showcase of our community and the amazing talent like Coleman Hell and our young athletes and families united in passion for our city. It also showcased our record 10 Allen Cup championships, our NHL players, our gold medal women's Olympic, Olympic athletes, and other players of, of every level of hockey, a game our city so loves. We'll have another opportunity to showcase our city this summer as Thunder Bay welcomes over a thousand athletes participants and attendees at the Can-Am Police Fire Games this July. I'd like to thank everyone on the steering committee, uh, to the volunteers, uh, and everyone that's helping out to make this a significant event. The Can-Am Police Fire Games will showcase Thunder Bay across North America. We can take pride in our strong education sector, in our partners at Lakehead University, the Northern Ontario School of Medicine, the Law School and Confederation College. In our student and youth and entrepreneurs, they are doing great things in our city. <clears throat> we can take pride in the strong arts and culture community we have here. That pride is highlighted in Tourism Thunder Bay's 2016 Experience Guide that showcases all we have to offer and the talent of our local artists and attractions. And there are many. Recently, one of our local restaurants was highlighted in the New York Times. 
I'd also like to acknowledge a Railway Historic Society for its work to preserve important pieces of our city's history and culture. I'm also proud of the work from groups like the Northwestern Ontario Municipal Association, NOMA, Northern Ontario Large Urban Mayors Caucus, the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Cities Initiative, SHIFT, the Young Professionals Network, and many more working in this city. And we're all working together to make priorities for the region and move them forward. We can take pride in the work of Earth Care, Thunder Bay, and our recently approved climate adaptation strategy. We are well ahead of the curve. Cities all over the world are challenged with increasing budgets uh, over infrastructure demands and uh, as we prepare for climate change and adaptation. We in Thunder Bay have seen extreme effects of our, to our budget uh, with the last two winters and the flood in 2012. But Thunder Bay is le a leader in climate adaptation. A significant number of community stakeholders and residents have all been involved in this work and we can all be very proud of them. As well, Thunder Bay has recently joined the Compact of Mayors and we're close to meeting our greenhouse gas emission targets. These are huge accomplishments. We are the second community behind only Vancouver to meet these targets. Although it is a continual uphill battle, Thunder Bay has made gains in advancing in infrastructure since introducing our Enhanced Infrastructure Renewal Program. We're investing in roads and key infrastructure and continually striving to close the gap. In 2015, Council Administration invested $40 million in roads, sidewalk rehabilitation, residential paving, sewer and water main uh, replacement and repair, bridge work and street light uh, renewal. In 2016 will be an important year where Thunder Bay will continue to invest in rebuilding its essential infrastructure. We hope in partnership with the federal and provincial governments. 2016 will be an important year uh, also uh, as we'll in, have invested in the last, uh, since 2011, 316 million in gross expenditures of its tax and rate supported capital renewal program. This has partly been achieved by investing an additional $31.4 million through enhanced infrastructure renewal program. And Council should be very proud of that initiative. In his speech to the Toronto uh, Board of Trade on January 21st, the Honourable Amarjeet Sohi, Canada's Minister of Infrastructure and Communities, outlined the government's priorities for infrastructure spending. <coughs> Excuse me. He reiterated his government could invest $60 billion of new investment over the next 10 years, including an additional $10 billion over the next two years. He went on to confirm that the government has three priorities, public transit, green infrastructure, and social infrastructure. The minister in indicated that the government was considering a two-phased approach. The first dealing with what he called recapitalization and repairs, and he specifically referenced repair of social housing, water and wastewater systems, and aging bus fleets. It would appear that the long-term approach of Canada's new government will not only deal with three priorities, but in the words of the minister, provide predictable, dedicated, and transparent funding where it is needed. Thunder Bay already has a plan to rebuild our aging infrastructure. And this new federal funding provides us with the opportunity to have a large percentage of this planned and may I say shovel ready work paid for by federal tax dollars. This will free up already committed funds for other priorities, including perhaps our proposed event and convention center. I have asked our new city manager to have the executive management team compile the list of projects that are shovel ready and meet the anticipated federal conditions so that we're ready to submit as soon as the program rolls out. On a related matter, the Thunder Bay District Social Services Administration Board, known as DSAB, has this responsibility for the development and operation of social housing. That does not absolve the city of its responsibility to look after the most vulnerable and marginalized members of our community. Goal four of our strategic plan is that Thunder Bay be a place to live with the appropriate housing for all. And states that we should do this by partnering with the DSAB and the private sector to ensure more social housing is constructed in our city. 
By far the biggest part of the wait list is single adults. The same people that utilize our two emergency shelters in the city, Shelter House and the Salvation Army. The city can do its part by providing DSAV and others with city land in order to construct new social housing. Once again, I've asked our executive management team to put their minds to how to best facilitate the work of the DSAB and to expedite the construction of new social and affordable housing. Last year, new governments, both provincial and federally, came to the table. Their ideas mesh with ours, and we have already held positive meetings with new minister Patty Hadju and MP Don Rusnak. We continue strong intergovernmental relationships with Minister Michael Gravel and Bill Morrow. The Premier herself met me in my office last week for an hour and the City Manager and I were able to share our priorities with her. I'm excited that working together we will work to make Thunder Bay the best it can be. I mentioned in my inaugural address that bringing one major manufacturing company to the City of Thunder Bay would be a game changer. I am proud to confidently say we will be seeing an announcement in this area shortly. We have been working with a private company to land them in Thunder Bay and make their arrival seamless. This will mean hundreds of jobs for our city and region and help our economy grow. The city has also been actively working to attract Los Angeles-based company BXI who is interested in setting up in the Victoriaville call center space. The company is holding a career fair this coming weekend to evaluate our available workforce, which could translate into three to four hundred jobs for our citizens if they choose us. This event is an important step in satisfying this global company's needs and to help them choose Thunder Bay. We take seriously all opportunities to showcase our workforce and put a spotlight on Thunder Bay. Strong interest from contact center professionals is important if VXI is to commit to bringing jobs to our city, which will have a tremendous impact on our economy. I want to give special thanks to the Community Economic Development Commission, Realty Services and Corporate Communications for all their work and dedication to land this opportunity in Thunder Bay. I'm proud to recognize Thunder Bay Economic Development Commission, who doesn't often get the credit that they're due for responding quickly to new opportunities and initiatives to attract direct financial involvement from government and private sectors. The CEDC provides a range of services to business, investors, and entrepreneurs. Behind the scenes, CEDC staff work very hard to attract new investment and to secure confidential information to facilitate decision making. Together, we're working to enhance Thunder Bay's profile as a regional service centre and hub. Another of Council's strategic goals in the area of quality of life is to be a leader in accessible recreation and services for all people. We will do this by investing in new and revitalized recreational facilities and affordable, accessible programs, services in neighbourhoods for people of all ages. I am proud to report work has already begun on the Community Services Recreation and Facilities Master Plan that will analyze facilities, programs and demand across the city and make recommendations to address our current and future needs. Extensive community consultation will take place over the next several months beginning in February. Something that may not be widely known but delivers an enormous sense of pride for our veterans, members of the Legion, the military, the city, historians and academics is that Thunder Bay is the city of the poppy. The historic decision to make the poppy the official symbol of remembrance happened right here in our city at the Prince Arthur Hotel in 1921. Thunder Bay recently launched the City of the Poppy campaign in conjunction with the commemoration efforts, recognized the centennial of the First World War during which thousands of men and women from Port Arthur and Fort William served. These commemorations began in the fall and will run through 2018 resulting in the City of the Poppy legacy. I ask all councillors and citizens to get behind this project, and I would also like to thank the World War I Commemoration Committee for all their hard work to date. Economically, Thunder Bay has been identified in a new report as one of the best cities for property investment in Canada. Our unemployment rate closed out the year at 5.7%, 
well below the provincial and federal average, and we continue to work hard to diversify our economy. We are now heading into the 2016 budget deliberations. City Council is constantly trying new ways to engage citizens in the budget process. City of Thunder Bay will be hosting a new pre-budget session where the public is invited to ask questions and discuss what the proposed budget means in an informal setting prior to Council's detailed review. Leaders are assessed by their courage, judgment, integrity, and dedication. These qualities coupled with the core values of generosity, volunteerism, perseverance, and civic pride that have shaped our city over the past 50 years will, the, will be the principles to which I aspire as your mayor. And I know I speak for council administration when I say they're of the same mind. In closing, let us take a moment to celebrate and consider all that Thunder Bay means, to celebrate our history and commit to working together to shape our future. We must recognize that there is so much more that unites us than divides us. We must also honor and learn from our past and use the lessons we have learned to achieve our present goals as we come together to work to shape the future of those who will come after us. Folks, it is time to come together to get to work in 2016 with renewed energy, commitment and resolve. I'm excited to get started and I look forward to working alongside my fellow councillors city administration, and all the citizens of Thunder Bay as we continue to move our city forward to becoming our best. Thank you, Magwitch, and God bless.